Today we've made the trip down to Champaign-Urbana to take an up close and personal look at the University of Illinois as they prepare to take on their Rose Bowl opponent, USC. So we wanted to take a look at the film and see some of the tendencies that SC has offensively and also defensively. I'm joined by offense coordinator Mike Loxley and we kind of wanted to kind of get an idea of personnel wise. You know, not a lot of people are giving Illinois opportunity in this game because of personnel. When you turn on the film, what do you see? Well, I mean, obviously, I, I agree with a, a lot of what everybody else is saying. <laughs> We're going to have a heck of a challenge, Howard, from a personnel standpoint. You know, they've got defensive ends that run like linebackers, they got linebackers that run like safeties, and safeties that run like <laughs> corners. So. Uh, we're going to have to find a way to break a few tendencies. It starts right here, you know. Uh, one of the things that jumped out is Oregon went with some very fast tempo to try to maybe get things, uh, get plays called where they weren't aligned and they were able to make, uh, make up some hay and recovery with their speed. Here's a little sprint out action where they're trying to get Dixon out, on, out in space. Uh, they do a great job of containing the ball on the front side. And then, again, here's an athletic quarterback out in space making some plays with his feet, getting close for a first down here. You see up here at the top, this corner here, playing good, smart assignment football. Once the quarterback starts scrambling, he's plastering the receiver, not looking in the backfield, taking care of his assignment. And, you know, their coaches have done a good job. You know, a lot's made of how great athletes they have, but they really play sound and fundamentally sound. And, you know, they don't give up a ton of big plays. What do you think that you might have an opportunity to have a little success at? Because nobody's giving you a chance to win this thing anyway. So how do you pick up two or three yards against a defense like this? One of the things that jumps out to me is they're going to try to create five one-on-one -on -one blocks at the, at, at the line of scrimmage. When you're as athletic and as talented as they are, they, they don't have to try to out-scheme you. I mean, here they're just lining up in a bare defense. You put, you know, basically a five down front with the ends out wide and the sand back on the line of scrimmage, creating five one-on-one -on -one blocks. But as, what you can see on the perimeter is you got a lot of one-on-one -on -one opportunities out here in space. Right. And, and, and what that does is it invites us to have to make some plays in the perimeter, whether it's via the pass game, you know, being able to throw some, some quick stuff in here because obviously with the type of pass rush that they're gonna, we're going to be exposed to by their speed, it's going to you know, create matchups for our guys on the outside having to win the one-on-one -on -one battle. You're going to see a lot of different looks, and especially when you get those one-on-one -on -one plays up front those linebackers are able to run and really get around and decide where they're going to, the routes that they're going to run underneath. So it's going to be, again, it's going to be up to juice. It always keeps going back to that uh, to really be able to make some plays with his arm, I guess. Earlier in the year, you know, you see juice back there staring at the rush. And I think the turning point was the Ball State game to where he finally went out there and, and, and played as if he wasn't afraid to make a mistake. And, you know, he wound up throwing that pick six against him and came right back the very next play and hit the same route uh, down the field to Aurelius. There's got to be one or two guys that uh, give you nightmares. Who are those guys for SC? Well, I mean, they've got a, a defensive tackle. You know, the Cedric Ellis kid, I think mm -hmm. is his name. You know, usually plays the shade or the nose here. You can watch him on tape here. He's a guy that we're going to have to find a way to neutralize him. Uh, he's a, a ferocious penetrator, does a great job against the double team, and as quick as he can possibly be, you know, their defensive end, uh, number 96. You know, he's a, a guy that obviously, you know, has played a lot of football for him, comes off the ball, great pass rusher. and then. And for those linebackers, you know, 55 and then uh, 58, those two, those two guys, like I said, they run like safeties and, and, and do a great job of impact at the point of attack. Who might be a guy that's going to step onto the national stage and have to play big for you this year? It's Regis Ben, you know. He uh, started off and was a guy that we, we all obviously want to find a way to get him what I call his touches. Uh, you know, somewhere between 12 and 15 a game. And, you know, the last few games he's been nicked up. He kind of hit the freshman wall at the end of it. But he's itching. Uh, he's itching to, 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 to make, a, make a name for himself in the big dance. And it was funny, I'm on the road recruiting and he calls me on my phone and, and tells me, hey coach, you need to come up with some stuff for me now. <laughs> this, this, is, this, is, this is the game for me.